collect your free seats by going to BYUcougars.com slash Sitake Show on the day before or the day of the show, and you can be a part of our studio audience. Special shout out to members of the BYU football family joining us here in the studio audience tonight. Good to see you all here. Appreciate it. Love the support. We do appreciate it very much. Next week, we'll be live from the Lavelle Edwards Stadium parking lot southeast side for a two-hour BYU Sports Halloween Spooktacular starting at 7 o'clock Eastern next week. And we invite your questions for Coach Satake and our weekly player guest via Twitter using the Satake Show hashtag. Let's begin the show. Welcoming into Studio C, the second-year head coach of the Cougars, he is Kalani Satake. <laughs> Thanks for being here, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah, some familiar oh, faces some in the audience here, tonight. Yeah. Must not have had date night tonight, you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Decided to liven up our crowd with some people you might recognize. Yeah, love you guys. What do you, what do you think when you see these guys? Huh? What do you think when you see them up there? Uh, just love our team. And um, you guys know how to make it work, so. I'm just trying not to get too emotional, otherwise this show's not going to really work too well, but uh, just love those guys, and uh, they make me a better person, so I got my family here, so there's a lot of good people here, a lot of good, great super fans, and so, uh, you know, I um, wasn't expecting this, but I'm ready to whirl now, let's have a great show. All right, let's do it. All right. All right, all right, let's get up. <clears throat> Well, we usually look back on what just transpired before we look ahead, and you guys have just spent a second week back east, this time to Greenville, North Carolina, first ever trip uh, for BYU there. In fact, uh, you were the farthest ever away visitor to that stadium. No one had ever come from this far away uh, to play out there Saturday, and I know the hospitality was great. The results weren't what you wanted, but uh, a good experience for the team and for your fans to see you play. Yeah, just another chance to be together with our, our, our family out there, you know, our team, and uh, play football and um, had a great start for you guys. Yeah, I, th I thought I thought our guys worked hard. Our players they give they always give max effort and um, just thankful for all, all the hard work they put into it. And you know, it just it didn't work out our in our, our favor. And uh, you know, looking forward to the next one. But uh, there's a lot of good things that happened in that game, and obviously some things that we need to work on. Um, but uh, just extremely proud of our players and, and the resolve and the fight that they had in that game. And uh, just unfortunately, you know. I have to say, as coaches, we didn't do good enough, and that's that's our, our players work hard. But I put this always, it, you know, for me and my, our coaching staff, we we know how much how much work goes into it, and we know that we need to do better. And that's uh, the one thing we'll never do is blame our players for for uh, giving everything they have on the field. Resolve and fight words you mentioned saw it on both sides. Two teams, one and six, coming in, and uh, they were as desperate for a win as you were. Yeah, and, and um, you know, they were at home, and, and um, you know, I think they had a good showing. I think it was their homecoming, and uh, but we had a, a large group of fans there, too, and, and our players, I was proud of them. They went out, out of the tunnel and went over and, and uh, waved hi to them and thanked them for being there, and, uh, you know, we, we were able to sing the fight song with them at the, at the end, and um, just just proud of, of being part of this BYU family, and, and uh, you know, just want, want, definitely want to win and, and get better, but um, just grateful that, that I'm in this position, that I, ha I get to be around such great people, whether they're fans or players or coaches. Yeah, it's, uh, points are more important than yards, and they always will be, but uh, Tanner Mangum had his first 300-yard game since you've been the head coach, and uh, this thing got going, and uh, BYU started uh, slinging it around pretty, uh, pretty well, especially in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean, and, and, you know, I was really proud of our receivers. I, I thought we, um, you know, I thought, I thought our guys, uh, you know, Tanner spread the ball around pretty well, and the O-line protected him, and, um, you know, I, th I was really pleased with, uh, with, the able, with the ability for us to get down the field, and uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to score enough points. But um, you know, we, we win and lose as a team, and, and uh, this was uh, on all three phases wasn't good enough. And, and uh, but just overall, just proud of our players. Like I said, their hard work and their effort. Um, you know, we just have to put it together and, and make sure that we get the W next time. We see some good things there. Things you can build off of for San Jose State moving forward. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that's how it's been every week. There's always some positive things. And uh, you've known me for a while now. You know I'm going to be a positive person and, and um, you know, try to, try to reinforce what we're trying to teach our young men and uh, do it within a positive way. Um, um, I think life is a, is a great thing, you know, and uh, although we're going through some adversity, I'm embracing it, you know, that's, uh, I get to be around great people, so I'm re really looking forward to fighting through this. Aleva Hifo has been a breakout player for you the last couple of weeks, both in Starkville and then in Greenville. Uh, his ECU game was, was remarkable, nine catches, 148 yards, and again, last two weeks, he's been, uh, he's been a real playmaker for you. Yeah, I think we, we were, you know, going into even the camp, we, we felt comfortable with our receiving core, although uh, we lost a lot of senior guys from last year, but I think we talked about that these, you, you don't know a lot of these guys' names, um, but you will, and uh, it's just, it's taken a, a little while for it to click, but um, for a, a variety of reasons, but the, those guys can play, you know, we have Mike Simon here tonight, but Aleva and Matt Bushman, there's a lot of young guys that are returning next year, and um, they have a lot more big plays to make, uh, you know, this weekend and, and, and for the rest of the season. I was breaking down some stats today, and, and I came across uh, the fact that uh, clearly uh, most of your third down conversions and touchdowns scored right now are from guys that weren't playing for you last year. So they're, they're, they're either new to the program or redshirting last year, and they have a bright future in front of them. So a lot of what we're seeing now is what we're going to see for some years to come. Yeah, and there's a lot of guys that are, um, I mean, through some of the opportunities that they, they receive from uh, injuries and other things, uh, our guys are, are, are answering the call. and, and um, some of these guys are getting more reps than they anticipated, and they're making them count, you know, and, and uh, the, the youth is, is a good thing, but, um, you know, we, we get to get them back and get to keep working with our players, and uh, I just I love these guys and love the way that they work for us, and um, I, I'm just looking forward to getting a lot of points on the board and, and being aggressive. Like I said, I said this, you know, yesterday in the press conference that um, our guys are fighters, and... and uh, not, I mean, we can literally fight, but there's other, th there's a, the, the, in the, the sense that these guys will not quit. And uh, I feel it through our players, and I'm looking forward to this weekend. We saw the throw game get on track a bit. Uh, the run game at a 100 yard day. Uh, let's take a look at your backfield a little bit. Uh, you got KJ Hall back as you lose Trey Dye. Uh, Squally wasn't there, but uh, Riley Burt was back in. Uh, we'll take a look at your top rushers here, and uh, they've all had chances to shine uh, this year. And uh, hopefully Squally's back sooner than later. Same thing for Kavika Fonua. KJ did come back. Trey is out for a bit. Uh, the player on the left, uh, Ula Tolutau, right now is uh, dealing with a bit of a situation. Uh, what can you say about uh, Ula's status moving forward? Well, th through our policy, I, I'm, I don't, you know, we don't speak specifically on our players and uh, in that regard. But I, I will say that uh, we love all our players and we will support them 100%. And uh, just looking forward to getting them all on the right track. But. Uh, the love and the caring is there and the support's there, and as well as from the, the fans and, and the people around BYU. All right. Time to talk about Tanner Mangum's uh, bigger day he had in Greenville. He played well enough to play the whole game. Ankle, I guess, felt good enough for him to go, go the full 60? Yeah, it's, it's better than it has been the um, last couple of weeks. But, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of things that he knows he can improve on. And, and um, um, offensively, as a whole team, where there's a lot of things that we can improve on. And, and he's going to always look at himself as... as what he can do differently as a quarterback, and uh, you know we, we have a lot of guys that are that are, are starting to come back. I think we're everyone's anticipating Bo coming back as well. You know and, uh, he's coming back from injury, so there's a lot of guys that we're looking forward to seeing on the field. And uh, it's nice to see Tanner not have that big old cast on his on his ankle. But um, you know a lot of our players that we believe in in, in each other, and uh, I think Tanner wants to improve and get better. And uh, although the stats showed that he threw the ball effectively and, and had some big yards, especially towards the end of the game. All he cares about is winning and, uh, and doing that as a team. And so he'd trade that any day for a win. Tanner's still your guy going forward right now. What's your situation behind him, uh, either two or three or four uh, behind him? Well, we're still working with, with Bo and seeing where he, where he can fit back into, our, into, into the mix. And, and um, uh, you know, Joe Critchlow is getting some reps. And then we also have Austin Confensis that, that is getting some of the Wildcat package. Um, but, um, you know, we, we, you know, we're always open to, to see who can make plays for us. And uh, we have a lot of quarterbacks on this team that say that they can make plays and they played quarterback in high school. And so the, they're all volunteering, too. But uh, right now, everyone wants to play everything and wants to help the team win. And I appreciate that. But we'll do it within the structure of what, what needs to happen. And uh, if we need any more help, then we'll go. We'll, we'll look elsewhere. 
Micah Simon's one of those guys who did play some quarterback in high school. Talked about that with Micah tonight. Where would you kind of, you talked about the word aggressive yesterday quite a bit, really in all phases, but where would you kind of maybe grade the offensive philosophy uh, from, from passive to aggressive, and where's the happy medium for you right now? Um, well, if you know anything about Ty Demer, he's an aggressive person, you know, and, and I, I'd like, the reason why I mention that is just we want to see the offense and the defense reflect the personality of our coaches, which is being aggressive and making big plays, and, and, and that's kind of, that's what our players are, you know, and uh, I, I mentioned that. I, I think maybe uh, it's not like we're going to blitz every play, although I don't mind if we do, you know, but uh, we, we, but we have the opportunity to to do a lot of different things as an offense and defense special teams, and our our coaches are aware of that. So I didn't want to come down and say that they weren't aggressive. It's just we want to keep we want to keep putting our foot to the gas and and, and keep going at it. And, and um, I mentioned feast or famine, and, and uh, we're going through a little bit of a famine now. But I think the feast is, is yet to come. You know, so uh, we just keep that mindset of being aggressive and trusting each other and and believing in each other. And I, th I think good things will happen. All right, that's it for our opening segment tonight. When we come back, we're taking our first break. As we come back, we'd like you to know that you can enjoy a full hot breakfast buffet, dinner Monday through Wednesday in a kitchen, a large grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail, all at the residence in Marriott in Provo. When we return, Kalani takes a big picture look at where the Cougs find themselves and ahead to Saturday's game with San Jose State. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. For those not aware, yeah, the coach has pulled off a pretty good prank on us. So we're getting back at him now. On the phone, Spencer, a rare treat. We have two coaches, Coach Judkins and Coach Detmer. Yes, and uh, let's throw out a generic question. What's the most important part of coaching your respective teams to victory? Well, for me, it's having the players watch BYU Sports Nation before every game. If you guys didn't do the show, we wouldn't win a single game. I agree with Coach Detmer because the talent has them and inspires us to be their best every day. Hi, Johnny! Let's be reasonable here. We're just joking! Blue runs deep on BYU TV. Don't miss the San Diego BYU women's volleyball game. Live Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 7 Mountain. Watch all of your favorite BYU teams on BYU TV. Your home for Cougar Sports. Were you a perfect person in your first life? Of course not. So you made mistakes. Decisions you regret. That's what you get when you make all your decisions by yourself. But with a companion, you don't have to decide. It saves us from sorrow and pain. That's freedom, Duncan. Why would you want to run away from that? Because that isn't freedom the opposite. BYU Football with Kalani Satake is presented by Ken Garf Honda of Orem, a proud supporter of BYU and the Cougar community. We hear Cougs. BYU Football with Kalani Satake continuing now live from Studio C. For some diehard BYU fans joining us every week for this Tuesday night show. And tonight, some BYU football players and coaches. We did a we did a bit of a roll call during the break. Do we think we get everybody? Oh, I don't know if I can do that again. But it, no, did, did we get them all during yeah, the break? Yeah, I think did so. We... All the players and coaches that are here, and I appreciate them being here. I, I wasn't expecting that, but love seeing them. So it's been a while since this morning's practice. <laughs> <laughs> They're starting to miss you already. Yeah, I yeah. miss them. Yeah. <laughs> so yesterday's press conference, uh, I, I think the quote from you was, he, he said, I'm just just sick of losing, I think is what you said. And that kind of says it for pretty much everyone here in the room, I guess, and you're all ready for this, for that positive result. It's been a while in coming. Um, what's, uh, what are you kind of feeling in your heart here as, as a former BYU player and somebody that kind of feels, you know, the weight of one and seven right now? Well, I mean, I know it's, it's difficult, you know, and I've asked, I, I talked to the players today about being as positive as we can, um, and, you know, whether it's social media and hopefully they're all listening, but um, with, our, with our staff and, and, our, and our, our coaches and our, our players, I mean, that's, 
that's something that I'm about is being positive. And the fact that there's a, there's a lot of people that are questioning us, that's okay. The record uh, is, is not what we ex expected, you know. And, um, but the point is they all care, you know. Um, whether they have quit or are doubters or, uh, are, you know, or staunch supporters, we get a lot of support, and, and uh, the fact is that they care. And my goal as a head coach is to make sure that we uh, bring the quitters back and make the doubters believers and make the believers super fans. And so that's that's the goal. And then uh, it's all built around positivity. And there's there's a lot of there's a lot of doubt out there, but I promise you, there's what much more support. And um, I feel it, and I know our players feel it. We see it everywhere, and and uh, you know we we saw it at all the places that we've played so far. So. So oh, we're, we're hoping to see it on, against San Jose at home, and um, these guys are going to get it turned around. I, I, I know these guys can do it, you know, and, and uh, I've seen them, and, and our coaches and our players, uh, they believe in each other. So I'm just looking forward to getting past adversity and um, learning from this, this point, point of time. I mean, I'm, I write a lot of notes, and so, I mean, there's a, I'm, I'm, my job isn't to tell people how to, how to behave and how to act, but I have a good memory, you know, so uh, we'll get this thing turned around and see what happens. Well, I know that you know this. Uh, beyond the coaches and players who are joining us this week, in this building every Tuesday night, we get the believers who will be your super fans moving forward. And those fans we do appreciate. When you're here every week, every Tuesday night. Oh, yeah. Shout out to you all. I know you feel it. You get to visit with them uh, during our commercial breaks and after the shows, things that people don't see on TV. And uh, I know you sense every week that you've still got the support uh, for behind you. Yeah, we have the real fun once, the, once we go to commercial break. <laughs> all the food and all the fun yeah. happens. So yeah. You should probably come to the show, live, the, to the studio if you want to see it. But, no, I, I appreciate all the fans that support us. There's a lot of, a lot of fans at, at, at the game, at the East Carolina game, that um, drove a long ways to make it there. And I appreciate them being there. And our, our players do, you know, so... Um, we know that it's, it's, it's a tough times right now being a BYU fan, but um, we're going to get through this. You know, we'll get through this, and I appreciate their support and their prayers. And, their, and uh, you know, I, I was a fan my whole life. My, my father raised me to be a BYU fan from birth. And so uh, I, I always tell everyone, I feel like at nine years old, I single-handedly won the national championship <laughs> with my support and my prayers, you know. So uh, uh, just keep praying and keep supporting us, and uh, this thing will turn. We know you've got five games remaining, and the objective is five wins, obviously. What are the objectives, the concrete objectives moving forward that you think will show themselves in winning football? Well, just win, win the first one and win this next one and focus on that and ask our players to exhaust all their energy, they, which they have done, um, and, and prepare well, which they have done. So uh, the coaches, same thing. You know, we've had a lot of unfortunate things happen. There's not, you can't just single out one thing as the blame. And if you were to, then I'm the head coach. It falls on me, you know. But there's a lot of factors that go into it. And as a head coach, I have to uh, look at these factors and decide what's the best thing for our team and our program. And, and uh, right now, I, I feel positive that things are going to turn and things will get better. And we'll keep working. I mean, there's, this is some adversity right now. And, and probably some things that nobody expected. None, none of us did. None of the players and none of the coaches expected this. But I'm, I'm going to keep fighting with it. And then I know I got, I got a bunch of fighters on the team. And guys that won't quit so uh, when you have that you there's a lot of promise ahead okay San Jose State is your foe on Saturday the head coach Brett Brennan is a guy that you know well uh, you and coach E coach Tuiaki are on the same staff with him up in Corvallis at Oregon State this is his first year with San Jose State yeah and, and um, coach Brennan uh, I mean we're, we're good friends we're not only we're on the same staff but coach Tuiaki and I we lived in the same neighborhood as them and our kids uh, all hung out and, and you know messed up each other's homes and stuff like that. So uh, we, were, we have a close connection with, with the Brenton family, and, um, you know, Brent and, and Courtney are awesome. And so it's going to be fun to see our friends again. And, uh, you know, we're just looking forward to competing against them. But I respect him and his staff. There's a lot of guys on that staff that we know as well. And, and uh, But just looking forward to competing and, and just really excited about being home and giving our players another opportunity to play against uh, against another team and, and uh, being San Jose State coming, coming here. We have a lot of guys from the Bay Area that, want, that know a lot of the guys on the team too, so it'll be a lot of fun. See two of their top wide receivers on the left. They also start a freshman quarterback, so freshman wide receiver on the far left, freshman quarterback is involved, and that linebacker you see on the right leads the nation right now in tackles and solo tackles as the San Jose D has been on the field longer than any other team in the FBS this year. One last thing before the break. Talk with Coach Brennan uh, yesterday. 
and he said that uh, back when you were still at Oregon State and uh, BYU was looking for a coach, they gave you a call, and you two were on a recruiting trip together, and uh, oh. you started talking with BYU, and you kind of swarmed to secrecy like, uh, okay, this is just between you and me now, but there's some things going on here. Yeah, and we, we talked about some scenarios and things like that about him possibly coming to BYU, and he said he couldn't drink, stop drinking alcohol, so that wouldn't work. <laughs> so I, I appreciate his honesty, but no, we, it, was a, it was a cool conversation, and um, it, was a, it, was a, it was nice to just share it with a friend, you know, and I mean, I was really excited at, at, the, at just the opportunity of maybe it happening, and I probably got a little too excited, you know, and in the car with him, but um, yeah, just... It's my dream, you know, and and and, uh, and he knows it. He talked about yeah. that too. He said he knew all about you and, and BYU and. And I'm happy sense. for him because he's from the Bay Area and he's he's back home coaching his team, yeah. and we're both going through so a rough patch right now, and and uh, so let's go and battle it out and see what happens. But uh, he, he's my friend, you know, before and after. He'll always be there for me. He'll always be good friends, and I speak for Elisa too because our families are really connected, and um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I, 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 that's what's great about this game of football. And, I think I'm old enough now that I have friends in every staff that we're going to play, and um, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, um, looking forward to staying old and, and uh, meeting a lot of friends as we play. Well, Coach Brennan told me, and I'll tell you all, uh, everyone there, that uh, he has full faith in you and knows you're going to get this thing flipped around and turned around the way you want it. So he has a lot of belief in you. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go do it against his team. Against his team. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> against his team. Well, uh, coming up after the break, we're going to bring in Micah Simon. And this is a guy that redshirted for you last year and has really proven to be one of the more reliable uh, wide receivers this year. Yeah, and a great athlete and um, just bought into what, what the team needs. And I'm sure he redshirting last year wasn't something that he really wanted to do. And But we saw something in him that, that we thought they could take a little bit more work with our excellent strength and conditioning program, you know, that they would get him ready. And um, he's one of the few, uh, the guys that we we purposely wanted to register to save him, knowing that we had a lot of seniors uh, in the wide receiver core uh, last year. So um, he's got a lot of big plays to make in the future, and then and hopefully he makes a bunch of them on Saturday. Right, Mike is coming up. Break time. We at Ken Garf Honda of Orem have a new dealership. Come see our showroom floor located on University Parkway. Ken Garf Honda of Orem. We hear Cougs after the break. Micah Simon joining us live in Studio C. To be taking your questions. This is BYU football with Kalani Satake. You're watching Super Tuesday on BYU TV, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. I went to BYU with the intention of finishing my degree. Along the way, things got a little bit busy. I always had that idea that I was going to go back, but as a non-traditional student, I just felt that uh, that opportunity was not going to happen until I explored what BGS really offered. Now, the BGS program gave me more flexibility and gave me the education that I wanted. As I was walking to the podium, it uh, was almost surreal. I don't regret getting my degree through BGS. Hi, I'm Dave McCann with BYU TV Sports. Each season, we invite companies like yours to be a part of the BYU brand, aligning your business with respected academics and athletics. Becoming a corporate partner means you'll benefit from showcasing your products and services with game day signage, social media, radio, and TV campaigns. Whether on the field, in the stands, or on the air, BYU's here to help your brand grow. Email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Next time on The Story Trek, I randomly end up in America's heartland, in the Corn Belt of Iowa, where I end up in a city that could have been named after The Story Trek. Being in a small town like Story City, it's going to be fun to raise a family, I think. And in an old school filled with hidden treasures, she might be the biggest treasure of all. It wasn't a vision here. I don't think I knew it was a vision here. Spirits here has been awesome. My teammates are my closest friends, the best friends. The BYU TV Sports Countdown to Kickoff, San Jose State versus BYU. Saturday, 2 Eastern, 12 Mountain on BYU TV. It's third down and four at the 12. Snap Tanner, deep drop, throws underneath. It is caught by Simon, 10, 5, pylon, touchdown! The Cougars open on top, Micah Simon in for the score.
Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Satake with your host, Greg Rubel. Welcome back inside Studio C. Reminder to use this hashtag, Satake Show, when submitting questions for Kalani and our player guest tonight. Speaking of whom, let's meet him now as we introduce our weekly player interview segment sponsored by Bam Bam's Barbecue, authentic to the bone. A former high school quarterback from the Lone Star State, Micah Simon is now showing star potential as a wide receiver here at BYU. One of the best third down conversion guys on the team, Micah last week recorded his first career touchdown at ECU, as you saw. It certainly won't be his last score. Please welcome for the first time into Studio C, Micah Simon. <laughs> Great to see you. Welcome back. Appreciate it. Well, maybe it's kind of appropriate that uh, our interview segment is sponsored by Bam Bams because uh, you like your barbecue. Sure do. Yep. <laughs> Being from Texas. What makes Texas barbecue so good? Uh, you can't. You can't really explain it. You just gotta. You just, <laughs> just gotta experience it. Yeah, you have to experience it. <laughs> well, before last Saturday, we saw your touchdown against ECU. Before last Saturday, your last touchdown scored in a game came in the state championship of your high school state title game 2014 and it came with you not at receiver but playing quarterback is that right yep that's right does this look familiar snap in the end zone yep. this is this is third and whatever 99 oh. yards Now, you weren't throwing it in this clip, but you did throw it for, I think, a buck 95 that night. Ran for two something. He ended up with 405 yards total offense in this game to win the state championship. What a night, right? What a night, yeah. <laughs> Tell us about your high school. Now, was it Preston Wood you played in that game? Was it? What's the uh, name of the school? So, uh, my school was Bishop Dunn. Right, but the team you played yeah, was Preston Wood. Your school's Bishop Dunn. Tell yeah. us about Bishop Dunn and, and your career there. Uh, Bishop Dunn, it's a smaller private school. Um, you know, about 600 kids. I had like 103 in my graduating class. Um, so people think that's small, you know, for Texas football. But, you know, we, we play with the big boys. We have a lot of guys all over the country at different schools, Notre Dame, University of Texas, Baylor, um, Cal. Uh, so we have Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. There's guys all over the place. And you could throw it around a bit. And when you got recruited here, it was as a wide receiver. Have you let Coach know and other guys that you can still, that you could throw it around a little bit? Yeah, for sure. I try to get my trick plays in. <laughs> Just tell him San Jose State what's going to happen. <laughs> well, actually, you were. One time we did get a little clever. Uh, you were involved in the play at Utah State, weren't you? Or that yeah, the, the Bo Tanner. Play with, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were kind of involved in that mix. You mean you weren't of. the guy that threw it, but. Uh, yeah. I, if it was a real trick play, then I would have thrown it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, so we'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, your hometown is Dallas, Dallas region, or right in the right suburb, or where yeah, was Dallas, it? Dallas, uh, Cedar Hill area right now. Um, grew up in Allen, actually, where uh, Tijon is. Yeah. From. So uh, tell us about growing up in the state of Texas and maybe what Texas high school football is really all about and how you transitioned to life here in Utah. Yeah, Texas high school football is different. Um, you know, Texas, California. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> those shoulder pads are huge. <laughs> uh, and that's your wide oh, receiver yeah. coach recruiting you. He was, guess, recruiting, he was recruiting somebody else at my school and he saw that picture but uh but yeah you know football and <laughs> they saw that picture and then it was like i gotta get this yeah <laughs> yeah football in texas is different you know california florida texas they always say those are three big states um so yeah, when i first came out here and went to a high school football game it was just totally different you know i was at a varsity game i'm not gonna lie i thought it was freshman uh <laughs> it was just a whole different type of atmosphere and you know like i said earlier you know joking around about the barbecue like with football it really is you have to go and experience it to kind of know what, what it's like. Now, Kalani, you had a sense you knew what Micah was going to be for you, which is why you thought you could redshirt him last year and maybe get another year out of him, right? Yeah, and, and, and um, you know, he, we still thought that there was a little de development that he could have gone through. We, we uh, selected a few guys that we, were, we had to really uh, decide whether or not to redshirt him because they could help us on the field, and, and he was one of them. I think it was him, Akile, and Trey Dye, and they were just a... They were workout warriors, and, and uh, they were basically with Nuu and AJ and Justin the whole time. And uh, a year later, they this is what happens. You know, he's, he's faster and stronger and bigger, and 
and uh, and he can, he can catch balls. So uh, he's those guys have a lot of a uh, lot of big plays to make for us, and I'm excited. Mike is here, and glad to be his coach. How was that redshirt year for you? It was tough, you know. I'm not gonna lie, it wasn't wasn't my plan, you know, heading into the season. But you know, after I talked with Coach Taki, Coach Demmer, Coach Cahoon, you know, I trusted what they had for me in the future and the vision they had for me, and it's all been working out now. So you can appreciate the process you've gone through to get to this point. Yeah, for sure. Uh, life in Utah, how you liking it, by the way, these days? It's fine. You know, I love it. No regrets coming here to BYU. Um, you know, got a great, great people around me. You know, obviously the coaches, you know, that are all here, the players that are up there. Um, you know, it's it's been great. What impressed you most about the recruiting process before we go to break here? The recruiting process, probably just getting around, you know, people that were already here at the university. You know, it's more, it was more of who was already here, you know, and hearing their, hearing their stories, their experiences about how it was. I'm glad you're having a good experience here. Appreciate it, Greg. Great to have you here. Stay with us. We've got more with Micah Simon straight ahead. When we come back, we'll go to our live audience and social media for Micah. This is BYU Football with Halani Satake. Heard mother. Gotta go. Thank you for watching Cosmo for us this weekend. Now remember, you only like sparkling water, room temperature. Make Come sure he wears on, a let's sweater. Go. Got, gotta go. Go Coops! Go Coops! Go Coops! Come on, Cosmo. Oh. Yeah, all right. All right. Sweetheart, we are gonna go see you again. Let's go. Having a degree is obviously going to help you when football's over. I would love to potentially become like maybe a paramedic or a fire captain. Having him kind of gives me the role model that I needed to easily adjust to the college life and uh, playing in college ball. During the Gilded Age, the United States, the great American experiment, became the shining city on the hill to the rest of the world. And when the Statue of Liberty raised her lamp, she stood as a testament to all that this was the golden door. Come, all are welcome. And come they did, by the boatloads. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you in part by Bam Bam's Barbecue, authentic to the bone. All right, so welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. There he is, Micah Simon is our guest here in studio, and we were taking a look at our Cougars in the NFL as we do week to week. Kyle Van Noy getting it done for the Patriots. He leads the team in sacks. Second in tackles and a huge fourth down stop the other night against the Falcons. Keep him out of the end zone. Daniel Sorensen working hard for the Chiefs. It took a tough loss on the weekend, but uh, man, he's playing well for them. Bronson Kafusi getting it done for the Ravens. And Michael Davis off the practice squad and made active earlier in the year and playing well for the Chargers. Let's back with Micah Simon. And Micah, let's go back to your first career touchdown. It was this past weekend at uh, ECU. We're going to see it. And as we see it, uh, maybe you could uh, talk us through the play a bit and tell us how it uh, developed. Yeah, uh, a play we repped in practice uh, all week. Um, yeah, third and third and short, got the perfect look that we wanted, and it kind of worked out just how we thought. A great play call by Coach Dedmer. You step out of one tackle around your waist. Guy gets you close to the goal line, but nothing was keeping you out there, right? Yeah, I saw it, so I had to go get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. First career touchdown, and again, I think first of many uh, for BYU. Right now, you're fourth on the team in catches, fourth in yards. You have the longest pass play so far, the longest grab at 50 yards. Uh, how do you see the pass offense coming along as the season has gone along, both for you and for the group? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been getting better. Um, we know we were all pretty young at the receiver position, or you know, even tied in with Matt being a being a freshman. So we all just had to get more comfortable uh, each game, and I think we've been doing that and getting uh, getting better each game. Kalani, how do you see the pass game progressing as you've seen it? Yeah, it was, I mean, there's there's in spots it, it's good, you know, and our protection has been good with our offensive line. So uh, you know, these guys run their routes, and as long as we can deliver the ball, they'll, they'll make big plays. And so you saw what happened in the ECU game when they get the ball in their hands and. Um, and, and there's a lot of great athletes that we have on our team. We just need to utilize them and, and get them the ball. 
I'm sure that you feel, Mike, this collection of athletes Kalani talks about is better than the one in seven record shows right now. You have to believe that your best football remains to be played and that uh, you can string some together here down the stretch. Yeah, for sure. You know, that's that's our mentality going forward. You know, we know that we can keep getting better and that we've been doing better each week. It's just time to, you know, put it all together for four straight quarters and then hopefully come out on top with a victory. One in seven is a tough road. What's keeping you guys up and keeping your heads in the right place right now? Uh, you know, it's first things first, you know, I think we all just love football, you know. It's, it's what we've been doing all our lives, and every day at practice, you know, we want to be there. The energy is still great at practice, and, uh, you know, we'll just continue to put the work in and know that, uh, that our work will be, be shown. Be, be rewarded. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's turn it over to Cougar Nation for a bit as we visit with Micah Simon. We start here in our live studio audience, and Brenton Farrell is first up at the studio mic. Hello, Brenton. Hello, Greg. Thanks. So, Micah, what is your favorite part of running a route? The Ooh, beginning, the end, juking out the defender. Like, what? What's the f your favorite part of running a route? Uh, this the end. You know, you, it's it's one thing running a route and being open, but if the ball's not coming your way, then it's kind of boring. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so it's, it's the end. You know, catching catching the ball. So yeah, that's that's the best part. How much have you learned about the nuances of route running? Your position coach was an expert route runner as a Cougar and as a pro. What have you learned at BYU about just, again, the art of running a good route? Yeah, uh, you know, all types of things. Making, try to make every route look the same so that you can keep the defensive back guessing. So learned all types of things from Coach Cahoon, you know, even Coach Detmer. Uh, and then, you know, I've, uh, you know, worked out with Margin Hooks, former BYU receiver. So um, he's also helped me out a lot. Okay, let's go to Twitter for our next question from Micah Simon. At Ryben3 asks you, what's the biggest difference in transitioning from corner to wide receiver? Now, you were quarterback in high school and uh, some defense as well. Uh, when so you got here, you had a couple, when I got here, you got yeah. a couple of tackles as a freshman. Yeah, yeah. so when I got here, um, it was probably a week or so into fall camp my <laughs> freshman year, and I was moved to a defensive back. And... Yeah, that was a that was a struggle. Uh, <laughs> you know, never never played corner before, um, so it was, it was that was tough. But I don't know the transition going to receiver has kind of it's been smooth because I've I was always on the offensive side of the ball growing up. The transition's more from quarterback to wide receiver, not cornerback to receiver because right. you were there for too long. But his freshman stats do show a couple of tackles. A couple of tackles, yeah, maybe yeah. maybe on kickoff or something. <laughs> All right, next Twitter question at the G Hansen twenty five. Uh, what have you liked most about your time at BYU so far? And you're only a sophomore. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, probably the people, you know, just the people on campus um, in my classes. Obviously, you know, the team, the coaches. Um, but it's just everybody, you know, even even like you, Greg, and, you know, <laughs> like, you know, Jerem and Spencer, Spencer, all those guys, you know, just make the, makes it fun here. Oh, great. And uh, we, we see he's got, a, he's got a fun personality and somebody we're going to be happy to have around here for a few more years. Yeah, and, and just great attitude, and, and uh, that shows that, him moving the corner, and he's always about the team when he was a freshman. And it's just, uh, I think he's right where he belongs at receiver, catching the ball. And, and he might be able to throw the ball a little bit. We'll see. But, <laughs> um, but he's a great athlete. <laughs> a great athlete and a great young man. And, and uh, just, I know his family's proud of him. Uh, Texas is a proud state, and, and uh, they're, they're proud of what he's doing here at BYU. And uh, like I said, there's, there's so much more that he's going to do in the future. Michael, we invite you to stick around here in Studio C for the rest of the show. Yes, appreciate sir. you coming on tonight. Thank awesome. you. Good job. Way to go. All right. Micah Simon, appreciation. Here at Kengar Volkswagen of Orem, we're excited to announce our new dealership is opening its doors in November. Visit our new showroom on University Parkway. Ken Garf, we hear Cougs after the break. Your questions for the Cougars head coach from the audience and Twitter. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. You're watching Super Tuesday on BYU TV, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Welcome to a partnership where customer experience comes first. It's our focus. It's your expectation. We provide support to those that go the extra mile for all of us. Supplying products, training, and service 
for generations. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com. We are going to see just pure joy on his face. Looking at the big blue sky, thinking whether you Is this the most random thing that's happened to you at a grocery store before? Yes, it is. <laughs> it most certainly is. I know for me. Just competition in all things. On the field, just trying to compete at, at your own position for the defense. I can hold my own. The BYU TV Sports Post Game, San Jose State versus BYU. Saturday, after the game, on BYU TV. What do you want? Finish the job. Cut me down. Look over there. Tanner Mangum in the shotgun on a three-step to the 20-yard line. Steps up, fires, end zone. It is caught! Wow. Oh, Matt Bushman reaches up, makes a nice catch for a touchdown. What a catch. Matt's first touchdown catch as a Cougar. And BYU makes it 33-16 with 3.48 to go. That's our exciting play of the game presented by Nissan, a proud partner of the BYU Cougars. Nissan, innovation that excites. on BYU football with Kalani Zataki here in Studio C. That play got me excited. Matt Bushman's first career touchdown. Heck of a grab, too, on that. Well, that was his first touchdown? Yeah. I didn't, yeah, well, he's, he does a lot of that in practice, too. So, yeah, he's a great athlete and um, great hands. Uh, you know, the baseball background helps him out, too. So, um, good route, and I thought Tanner threw a great ball. So, yeah, so hopefully Michael we get more a, of those. Yeah. Michael was a first-timer, and Matt was a first-timer that night. Yeah, let's so get their second and third and fourth That's what this, we need. this Saturday. Get more of that. One of the best parts of our weekly show with uh, Coach Satake. You can applaud. That's a good sentiment to applaud. Yeah, I need more of that. The other receivers are like, oh, throw me the ball. <laughs> well, we do love uh, opening it up for the fans weekly here uh, in our live audience and on Twitter. We have some questions ready to roll. We've got uh, Chris Oviet at the studio mic with Kalani. Chris, hello. Hey, how are you guys? Doing well. Hey, Coach. Uh, being the professional armchair quarterback that I am and coach, uh, I've noticed that Tanner Mangum's more comfortable, it seems, in the no huddle offense. Is there a chance that we see more of that to keep him going? You're trying to give a game plan away, right? Uh, <laughs> um, we can do it. We can do all of it. I mean, I, I think we, we've shown that we can huddle and, and, and go fast if we need to. And so um, depending on what our offense wants to do and what Coach Detmer wants to do, and, Without giving away the game plan, but yeah, we can do it. We'll just see if we do. So, and you're so you're the armchair quarterback. It's good to meet you. <laughs> yeah, it should be. I mean, we'll see. It, it, I talked about being aggressive, so whatever you can factor that in. Chris, thank you. Appreciate it. To Twitter we go at Mean Uncle Dave. We hope he's not really mean, but he's probably somebody's <laughs> uncle. Uh, what music or group or song is working for you right now in these times? Oh, gosh. My, my playlist? Uh, it all depends what kind of mood I'm in. If I want to punch something or if I want to just relax a little bit. So, uh, I, like, I like all kinds of music. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that uh, I'm always going to lean towards um, island-style reggae, though. Do the players, would the, players, would the players in the top row have a sense of your musical taste, do you think? Do they have a sense of it? I don't think so, because I like everything. I mean, I, I, I like the 80s, 80s music, too, and so I don't think they know. I, but I, I'm, I'm also up to date on the, you know, the, the music that they listen what to. What the kids are listening to these yeah, days. Yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm not that old, you know, so I, <laughs> I know who some of the, the singers are. I, I get it, you know, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm... Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm up to date, right, guys? Or you just be nice, right? I'm up to date on some of the stuff, and it's a very yeah. lukewarm response in the top row right now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> be humble, sit down. You know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> at Cougars09 with our next Twitter question: uh, How is Bo Hodges' health? Asks at Cougars09. How's he coming along? It's getting better, and um, you, you know, I, I will say that he's he's moving around and he's practicing. So we'll see how how it goes with the uh, with the training room and and. His health is all that matters first, and I, 
uh, that's that's one thing that I will not um, not risk for or win. You know, uh, is is our, our, one of our players um, their their health, and so I I love that these guys want to give everything that they have, but it's my job as a coach to make sure that they're pr protected and that that we keep them safe and that we take the necessary risks and not not put their lifestyle and their livelihood out there to just so we can win a game. Okay, more from Cougar Nation coming up. If you're looking for an even more convenient way to shop at Smith's, you should try Smith's Click List. Order online, then pick up curbside at the store. Visit smithsfoodanddrug.com slash click list for details. More Kalani Q&A after the break. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. In the timeline of life, you make choices every day. Like buying your first car, what a beaut. Or serving your mission, you come home and hop right into college. And then that magic day comes, marriage. Getting married is incredible and pricey. But you know what? Children are even pricier. Your family grows and you need that first home. No matter where you are in the timeline of life, Deseret First Credit Union is right there with you. DFCU, your values, your timeline, your financial future. The kids that come in here, one of the criteria is they have high risk home lives. Our criteria is no ability to go to school without our intervention. We've got kids that people thought were just hopeless and they're, goodness, they're smart, much smarter than me. If you study here, your future will be bright. This is where I think civilization is going to get reborn. And these kids are happier. on the story trek i randomly end up in america's heartland in the corn belt of iowa where i end up in a city that could have been named after the story trek being in a small town like story city it's going to be fun to raise a family i think and in an old school filled with hidden treasures she might be the biggest treasure of all it wasn't a vision here i don't think i knew it was a vision here Envy. Watch BYU Sports Nation on BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. I didn't think that would go public. BYU Football with Kalani Satake is presented by Ken Garf Nissan of Orem, a proud supporter of BYU and the Cougar community. We hear Cougs. We talked about members of the Cougar football family being with us here. We've got members of the Kalani Satake family, the actual fam up there. So, so if we had to, uh, if we had to roll call just the Satake family out there, who, who do you got tonight? Oh, there's a bunch. I got um, siblings. I got my two sisters here, brothers, uh, my cousins, uh, my daughter is the only one representing my immediate family. But uh, yeah, cousins, family, their wives, and, and it's been aunties and uncles, and so they're all here. Not all of them, but that's just a small portion of. They, we, this place wouldn't be able to fit all my family, <laughs> my official and unofficial family. So Timberly's got the night off tonight with the other kids. Yeah, but her sister, her sister's here, so I have my <laughs> my in-laws right there too. They're they're here visiting and from Florida, so um, it's going to be a lot of family in this game, and and it's going to be a lot of support. So looking forward to it. Show them all a W. All right, yeah. time to our final Q and A segment for Kalani. A hashtag Satake Show to get a question in for the coach, and let's go to at Crazy Coog Fanatic who asks. If you could ask Coach Lavelle Edwards one question, what would it be today? Oh. Uh, if I could have more questions, you know, that, I, I mean, <laughs> isn't that how you're supposed to answer those questions? No, I, um, I know what Lavelle would say to me. So I, I have a great relationship with him, his family, and uh, fortunate for me, I, I get a lot of uh, communication between Patty and um, his children and the grandkids that keep in touch with me and how proud they are of our players and how they represent, um, you know, off and on the field. And I got great young men that, that uh, are not perfect, but like I said, they're, they're perfect for me, you know. And, and, uh, and Lavelle loved, it, loved us when he was our coach. And uh, the only thing I can do is do what, I, what he did for me and, and hopefully that it helps these young men become better people and, and appreciate what they have. And then they're, they're great kids. They're great young men. And I, I, I'm lucky to coach them. And so I, I guess I'd, 
I don't think I would ask him anything. I think he, I, I know what he's thinking, and um, but he also, you know, for their family, they, they know that we'll get this thing turned around. What does it mean to you when uh, when Patty uh, reaches out to you and, and shares things with you? It means a lot. I mean, I I I, um, I know my my wife and Patty talk talk quite a bit, and uh, she keeps in touch with a lot of the wives on our on our our coaching staff, you know, and so. Um, uh, but the Edwards family is always part of BYU football, and so uh, they're always going to be involved with us. And I know that there's a lot of coaches on our staff that have friendships with with their fa with uh, Lavelle's family members, and so uh, they're always welcome here. And that's what we're all about as family. And so that I, I would not be here if it weren't for Lavelle, and BYU football would not be in the situation that it is if it weren't for him. All right, uh, one more Twitter question for you here, and it'll come from at uh, Trav Turner 22. And without giving away you know, game plan elements, how do you plan to be more aggressive in all three facets of the game this coming Saturday against San Jose State? Well, without g giving away too much detail, I, I, I've said that we've been aggressive. We just need to be more, uh, we just need to keep doing it and, and probably amp it up a little bit more. I mean, I, I have challenged our coach to do that, but I don't want it to, like I said, I don't want to think that people to think that we, want, we haven't been. Um, I just want it to all click together, you know, and, and if all, um, basically if all three phases just, don't worry about uh, about caution. Just let's go, you know. And um, I'm remember I'm the same guy that approved the fourth and 18, backed up <laughs> fake punt. So um, yeah, anything goes. So that's that's kind of what it is. And uh, just want to want to entertain the fans and and and, and uh, show them that we care. I mean, I know we have great support, but I think a lot of it can show in the way that we uh, just trust our players to make big plays and and um, on all three phases of the ball. All right, Kalani's closing thoughts are coming up. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. We're back after this. You're watching Super Tuesday on BYU TV, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. Football on BYU TV. Watch the Spartans of San Jose State invade LaBelle Edwards Stadium to challenge the BYU Cougars in a live matchup on BYU TV. With Dave McCann and Blaine Fowler calling the action, you'll get analysis and coverage that only BYU TV Sports can offer. San Jose State versus BYU. Live this Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 Mountain, only on BYU TV. Don't miss it. Ever since the accident, I don't remember anything. And it breaks my heart. Seeing you love me and not knowing if I love you. Goodbye, Vaughn. 13 comedians. You don't work at all and you don't deserve this. You have a serious Netflix addiction. With an attempt at drama. Yours is a love beyond compare. This cannot be. And stumbling at every step. Hey, Johnson family, I got a package from your grandma. Can't you see we're busy? Get out of here! This fall, look for their return to sketch comedy. Studio C, Season 8, Mondays at 7 on BYU TV. I'm Corbin Capucci, and you're watching BYU TV. BYU Football with Kalani Satake is presented by Ken Garf Volkswagen of Orem, a proud supporter of BYU and the Cougar community. We hear Cougs. BYU and San Jose State, 1 o'clock Mountain, 3 o'clock Eastern for the kick. We begin our coverage on radio at 1 o'clock Eastern. Then we join with TV, C2K at 2 o'clock Eastern. Watch the game on BYU TV, hear it on BYU Radio and the BYU Sports Network, and then all the post-game coverage, TV and radio for the Cougars and the Spartans. We are back on our final segment of BYU Football with Kalani Satake.
Well, BYU San Jose, a couple of one and seven teams, so both teams wanting to win equally badly. Uh, in your final season at BYU as a player, you guys were four and six at one point. And you guys kind of unified and, and rallied around to make sure that you sent Lavelle out the right way. This is kind of a unification moment now, too, isn't it? It's a different feel. You're not saying goodbye to a coach, but what's going to unify and get these guys together to finish things out the right way like you guys did back in your last season? Well, the players are doing it. And, and, and so, um, you know, I think that they, they know how to fix it, and, and I'm trusting them to get it done. And uh, we have great young men that know how to lead and uh, care about football, and they know what they represent on the field. And... and um, they know the sacrifices that it took them to get here. So uh, they represent their family. They represent the school and the church. And, and uh, I know that they're grateful for the position that they're in. So um, they're going to get it done. And, and I'm just excited to watch them. You know, that's, that's the key is that this thing will get turned around because of them and their belief and their faith in each other and their trust. And so um, I'm just lucky to have a, the, you know, a great perspective and a point of view on it. Next Tuesday, this show is going to be on remote, on site at Lavelle Edwards Stadium for the Trunk or Treat. Because next Tuesday is Halloween night. So it's Halloween and all the BYU athletics teams are out there for Trunk or Treat. We'll be doing our show from there. So question, can we get you into any kind of costume? And we talked about costumes for your guys here during the break. And a popular subject was Mo Longi, what he should be uh, for Halloween. There's some thoughts on that. Uh, what do you think? Can we get you into something? Yeah, I'm open for it. But I mean... Um... Nothing scarier than this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, um, I'll, I, told, I gave it away. I'm going to be Justin Bieber and show off my singing skills on, on Halloween. But, no, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. The, the players, they're, 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 they bought into it last year, and they dressed up, and, and uh, the fans loved it. And so um, it's going to be exciting that we have the host, um, all the student athletes there from BYU representing. And so it's going to be a lot of fun and get to see all our fans and be dressed up and um, you know, there were a couple of Kalani Sitakis out there that, that came and, and they looked, looked apart. One of them, I mean, I think Ty had the best one where he threw, he was me, but he got a penalty and his, his kids and wife were the were referees. So that, that was messed okay. up. <laughs> Co costume suggestions, hashtag yeah. Sitake show. We'll see you next Tuesday, Halloween night. This has been BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Thanks to Micah. And for Kalani, I'm Greg. We'll see you next week. Go Cougs! All the great things in life happen around great food. It's not just nourishing to your body, it's nourishing to your soul. Come into downtown Provo, see the amazing things that there are here, and you'll come again and again and again. Provo is so beautiful. I think that you'll find that when you come to Provo, there is something for everybody now. We've got a perfect recipe for success here. We've got good food, music, a good art, and we've got a lot of great culture here. So come and have some fun in Provo. When I was 15, I just 